It's all around us and it supports an ecosystem that all growth rests on. India is one of the largest producers of steel in the world. It's a fact that carries the hope of a country's high growth rate, its rapid urbanization and the endless needs of its population. Steel is produced in India by large integrated steel plants and smaller secondary steel units. A majority of integrated steel plants use state-of-the-art technology and production methods. However, the secondary steel sector, which produces much of the country's rebars, angles, flats and wires, has some way to go. Being a large steel producer brings with it its own responsibility. While the integrated steel plants are known for their modernization, the secondary steel sector's conventional production methods are inefficient in energy use, suffer from low productivity and have a serious impact on the environment. Where industry is, there is a pollution that is confirmed that there is a pollution. The list of industry is made that we have to stop it. This is the story of a technology-led intervention by India's Ministry of Steel and the United Nations Development Programme, which has enabled 300 steel re-rolling mills across the country to reduce their energy consumption by about 15 to 30 percent and also cut greenhouse gas emissions by up to 30 percent. As the world negotiates the new climate deal in Paris this year, we are proud to showcase this example of partnership between the UN and the government of India. If implemented in the secondary steel sector across all the steel mills, this would generate a monetary savings of half a billion dollars a year. It would also lead to reduction of three and a half million tons of carbon. Energy efficiency, in conjunction with improvements in productivity and the environment, has proved to be a triple win. One ton of finished steel generates one ton of carbon dioxide and other pollutants each year. To transform these energy consumption patterns, interventions were made at multiple levels. These include the pulverizer, which helps maintain optimum coal fineness. The burning of finer coal provides a steady heat output. Recuperators recover heat from the furnace exhaust. This reclaimed energy is used to preheat combustion air, which can recover up to 400 degrees of waste heat. In addition, combustion air flow is regulated through oxygen analyzers and the fan speed is altered for ideal power consumption using the variable frequency drives. These measures increase fuel efficiency, reduce scale loss and also increase a vital sector's cost competitiveness. Moving the composite mills to direct rolling had the most radical impact. It eliminated the need for the reheating furnace altogether, thereby reducing fuel consumption by half. In direct rolling, directly molten metal converts to billets and hot billets has been directly rolled. It has been saved 1,000 to 1,200 rupees per ton. 4,200 tons of CO2 emissions have been reduced. We used to go to the furnace. The furnace was very fast. 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 इसमें इसका हिसाब ही जो डायरेक्ट कमी चला रहे हैं इस सिस्टम से माल लेते हैं इसमें प्रदूषण बिल्कुल नहीं साफ हो रहा है। Change in technology went hand in hand with a change in mindsets, and beyond statistics, there was also a change in perception. Earlier, if my unit is running and my chimney is emitting visible smoke, no one would bother, and there would be no corrective action taken immediately. But now the thing is. If my person sees visible smoke coming out, he will immediately call the operator and say, Hey, your smoke is very out of the air. What happened? Control it. So that kind of cultural change has also come. The success of this project has organized a lagging sector into taking charge of its future and has helped the whole industry to see the key role energy efficiency can play in it. Still, the industry can be able to do it and be able to do it and be able to do it. उस दृष्टि से यह जो संयुक्त प्रयास है बहुत ही सराहनीय है 
इसकी आवश्यकता निश्चित रूप से आज हमारे देश में महसूस की जाती है और यह समय की मांग भी है भारत संयुक्त राष्ट्र संघ फ्रेमवर्क कन्वेंशन और क्योटो प्रोटोकॉल के हस्ताक्षर करता के रूप में ग्रीन हाउस गैस उत्सर्जन में के प्रति पूरी तरह प्रतिबद्ध है With time, we have understood the deep connection between what we make and how it affects us. The activities that build a life, a nation, a world are often the same as those that weaken it. But together we can move towards an alternate development paradigm, one that protects the environment that protects us.